So my question for you is, you know, we often hear in response to these concerns that, well, Putin, Khomeini, you know, they're war criminals, they're terrorists, uh, as if they're too inherently evil or immoral for us to negotiate with. But meanwhile, this administration has financed a genocide in Gaza for the last year, and every day you're up there denying okay. accountability for it. So, I mean, okay. what gives you the right to lecture other countries on their moral... So, if you have a policy question for me, I'm happy to take it. If you want to give a speech, no, but there are I plenty mean, of places in Washington where you can give a speech. Yeah, but people are, are sick of the bullshit in here. I mean, like, it is okay. a genocide. I'm gonna you go are abetting it. Another... You just watched journalist Liam Cosgrove challenge State Department spokesman Matt Miller over the United States' double standard on human rights. And I've got to say, that was very cathartic to watch because this hypocrisy that we've been seeing from the United States, it's just tiring at this point, right? Our government feigns concern about human rights and international rules and international norms while giving a pass to countries like Israel because they're our ally and it's strategically beneficial for us to support Israel. And it's not just Israel. They do the same for other human rights abusers who happen to align with the United States, like Saudi Arabia. But the question is, does international law apply to all countries equally, or are we just going to continue to selectively choose to enforce it when it's convenient? And I'm afraid that all of you watching already know the answer to that question. But even though Biden has shielded Netanyahu from accountability and emboldened him at every step of the way, he's reportedly been outraged by Netanyahu's war crimes behind the scenes, while notably not using his leverage to rein him in. But we learned about Biden's true feelings about Netanyahu due to excerpts released from Bob Woodward's upcoming book called War, where President Biden allegedly said the following about the Israeli prime minister, quote, that son of a bitch Bibi Netanyahu, he's a bad guy, he's a bad fucking guy, Biden declared privately about the Israeli prime minister to one of his associates in spring of 2024, as Israel's war in Gaza intensified, Woodward writes. Now, the book also sheds light on Biden's frustration with Netanyahu at other key moments when he was being defied by Netanyahu. For example, Biden apparently confronted Netanyahu about not having a strategy when he wanted to invade Rafa, but Netanyahu decided to dismiss what Biden said and invaded Rafa anyway. And Biden was reportedly steaming behind the scenes and called Netanyahu a fucking liar as a result. Then, when Israel assassinated a top Iranian general in a Syrian airstrike, Iran then retaliated by firing 100 ballistic missiles at Israel, which were mostly intercepted, but Netanyahu wanted to quote-unquote retaliate after after escalating tensions with Iran in the first place, and Biden told him to not do it and said to just take the win, but Netanyahu defied Biden and did it anyway. Then in July, Biden reportedly yelled at Netanyahu, saying, Bibi, what the fuck, after they launched an airstrike in Beirut that took out a top Hezbollah commander but also killed multiple civilians, and Biden warned Netanyahu that Israel was being seen as a rogue state around the world, but Netanyahu dismissed Biden's warning, saying, quote, the harder you hit, the more successful you're going to be in the negotiation. Meanwhile, while, as all of this was going on, Netanyahu was simultaneously sabotaging ceasefire negotiations and even assassinated the political leader of Hamas, who they were supposed to be negotiating with. And even though Biden was frustrated and humiliated by Netanyahu over and over and over again, there wasn't a single point where he even considered cutting off weapons to Israel, as far as we know. So if Biden is fully cognizant of the fact that Israel is viewed as a rogue state by the international community, what does that make the United States after we've supplied them with weapons that they're now dropping on children and continue to drop on children both in Gaza and in Lebanon? What does that make us? See, this is why the situation is so frustrating, because we keep hearing about Biden's supposed concern about civilian casualties in regional war, but he's refused to use his leverage and has gone out of his way to shield Israel from even a minimal amount of accountability at every step of the way. So these leaks make Biden look like a confused and feckless hypocrite. But Side note, there's other really interesting revelations from Bob Woodward's book. I wouldn't encourage you to buy the book. I would encourage you to just read the article that talks about some of these things. Apparently, Biden partially blames Obama for Putin's invasion of Ukraine, since Obama let Putin get away with annexing Crimea back in 2014. Also, Trump covertly sent Putin tests for COVID-19 when we had a shortage here at home. So, I mean, so much for America first, I guess. It's just amazing. Our leaders are so terrible. But I do want to get back to Biden because the Woodward revelations give us some insight into how ineffective he is at persuading Netanyahu. Not that it wasn't already obvious, but it's nice to see the internal deliberations and some insight into the phone calls that they were having because it doesn't matter, and this proves it, how harsh you are. You have 
to use your leverage. Otherwise, mean words and bad language, it's not going to persuade him, obviously. And what we've seen is Biden repeatedly make demands that are disregarded by Netanyahu because, I mean, the demands have no teeth. You can say don't do something, but if there's no threat attached to that or even an implication that you're going to hold him accountable, why would he listen to you? He's just going to do what he wants. And we're seeing the same thing play out once again, this time when it comes to whether or not Israel should strike Iran's nuclear facilities, which would be a major escalation, to put it mildly. Now, Donald Trump has said multiple times that Israel should do that, and he would support them doing that. So uh, buckle up, because that's going to be interesting if it happens. But Biden, he's sent mixed messages, which I guess is better than just saying, hey, do the bad thing, but it's going to lead to the same outcome for the most part. So Biden has said that he doesn't support strikes on Iran nuclear facilities, which is good. Case in point. The answer is no. Good, good. Love to see that. But wait, because he also said this. Would you support Israel striking Iran's oil facilities, sir? We're discussing that. I think, I think that would be a little... Anyway... Yeah, see, not very reassuring. So ask yourself, if Netanyahu defies Biden when he explicitly tells him no, what can we expect the response to be when Biden tells him, eh? I mean, it's exhausting. Things keep getting worse because this administration has emboldened Netanyahu at every step of the way. And I know that I sound like a broken record because I keep saying that, but it's true. And now, a month before the election, Netanyahu launched a ground invasion of Lebanon where they're using depleted uranium bombs, which have been banned under international law because of the impact that they have on civilians. And the Biden administration has still chosen to not pull the plug, even though it's clear that Netanyahu timed this invasion of Lebanon at the optimal moment when it would help Donald Trump. And it's not like Biden is oblivious to this fact because he was asked about this after Senator Chris Murphy voiced concerns about Netanyahu possibly trying to influence the U.S. election because... Of course, that's what he's trying to do. Now, here's how Biden responded to that. This week, Senator Chris Murphy said it's certainly a possibility that the Israeli government is not going to sign any diplomatic agreement prior to the election, which is what you have been calling for for so long, potentially to try to influence the result. Do you agree? Do you have any worries that Netanyahu may be trying to influence the election and that's why he has not agreed to a diplomatic solution? No administration has helped Israel more than I have. None. 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 And I think uh, Bibi should remember that. And uh, whether he's trying to influence the election or not, I don't know, but I'm not counting on that. Even though Biden has been incredibly helpful to Israel, to the detriment of his entire party, Netanyahu knows that things can get even better under a Donald Trump administration. Because let's all remember, Donald Trump let Netanyahu annex the Golan Heights and move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem at the request of one of his pro-Israel donors, Sheldon Adelson. And now Sheldon Adelson's wife, Miriam Adelson, gave Trump $100 million on the condition that he lets Netanyahu annex the entire West Bank. Guess Guess what? Donald Trump took that money. And now Miriam Adelson is denying reports that she gave Trump that money in exchange for the West Bank. But she kind of has to deny that because if she doesn't lie about that, then she's admitting to doing a quid pro quo, which is illegal. Not that Trump cares much about the law, but she wants to protect her ass, right? So to Netanyahu, Trump is the greater of two goods. And even though Biden says no administration has helped Israel more than his, here's what that got him. 54% support for Donald Trump in Israel compared to just 24% support for Harris. In other words, he burned the goodwill that he had to the ground and tarnished his own legacy for nothing. And yet, the chances of him cutting off weapons to Israel is still around 0%. But thankfully, not all Democrats are as dense as Biden is because, as HuffPost reports, a group of prominent Democrats in the House of Representatives has urged President Joe Biden's administration to end the, quote, lack of U.S. enforcement of human rights law as the country continues its military support for Israel, suggesting an Israeli culture of impunity is driving bloodshed in the Palestinian territories and in Lebanon, which Israel invaded earlier this week. Quote, the failure of the United States to consistently apply our own laws actively endangers the lives of U.S 
U.S. citizens, Representative Jim McGovern and four colleagues argue in a letter they sent to the Pentagon and State Department this week and exclusively shared with HuffPost. So even though it is incredibly frustrating to see this bullshit, as journalist Liam Cosgrove put it, there are people in power, thankfully, that do want the madness to stop. And Jim McGovern was quoted there, but thankfully he's not alone because Mark Pocan, Barbara Lee, Betty McCollum, and Joaquin Castro have also joined the call for the Biden administration to do the bare minimum and uphold international norms that he claims to care about and also respect domestic law here in the United States, which is important because you cannot supply weapons to countries that are knowingly doing human rights abuses. That is illegal under U.S. law. And we know that the Biden administration knows that Israel is a human rights abuser, even though they're playing dumb because Blinken had to lie to the public to continue to supply them with weapons. But Blinken is not the only liar in this administration because Biden himself was publicly opposed to a ground invasion in Lebanon while privately supporting it. And he did so to the chagrin of some people, even in the intelligence community, the State Department and the Pentagon, because they all feared that it spark a confrontation with Iran that could drag the U.S. into the conflict. But here we are. A year later, and we still don't have a ceasefire, there's now a war in Lebanon. Israel has ramped up aggression in the West Bank. They've assassinated Iranian generals. They've done airstrikes in Syria. And the genocide in Gaza, meanwhile, hasn't slowed down one bit. The deterioration of the situation is a direct result of Biden's failed policies. He has been a disaster here. And his refusal to use his leverage against Netanyahu has made everything worse. Israel is less secure. People in Lebanon and Palestine are worse off. And Trump is neck and neck with Kamala Harris in an election that otherwise shouldn't be close. Why? Because Biden failed. He decided to go George Bush 2.0. And look at where it's gotten us. It's just a travesty. And this is going to be his legacy. Oh, man.